Hi, this is Joseph Lebrec, and I'm going to be doing a short video on this little JavaScript library called HTML5SQL.js. And what this aims to do is to allow kind of simple usage for um, using SQLite databases on, let's say, a mobile application or really anything that runs on uh, in a modern web view, whether that's a desktop browser or something on a mobile phone. And you can get to this page by HTML5SQL.com. And here they have a, a basic overview, tells you about the features, you've got some examples and so forth. And it's actually super easy to use because you just sort of um, send all your SQL statements into this process method and then give it a uh, a success and an error function in case you want to do something based off of that. And there are a number of other things on here. For instance, there's a demo which goes through and uh, demonstrates performance, which is kind of interesting. But I've been uh, trying to get this uh, this database going in my, my little absent dilution application for Android. And I've decided to go with this particular library to do this. And I'm just going to talk about a basic implementation of how to use this particular library right now. So I've got my kind of index.html file here. And you'll notice I'm, I'm doing a few different things up here. Here's my Cordova. And I'm also using jQuery. So here's jQuery 1.8. And of course you could use probably 1.9 if you wanted to. And here is the actual HTML5 SQL.js file. And if we pop over to that particular file, you can see it's actually not very large. It just sort of makes working with local databases a lot easier when you're doing stuff in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the next thing we have here is my little data.js. And this is where all of my data methods actually exist. So that's where I'm actually using HTML5 SQL.js. But before we actually do anything with that, we want to go down here and on our body tag, we're going to listen to an onload event. And when the DOM is all loaded, we're going to invoke onBodyLoad. OnBodyLoad is going to go through here and register device ready, which is a phone gap thing, right? And when device ready fires, it calls on device ready. And when we do on device ready, then it's okay to go through and start doing things with our database. Right now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually invoke this function called drop tables. Drop tables is something that I wrote. It's in that data.js. So let's pop over to that. And you can see here's drop tables. And all we do here is call HTML5SQL.process. And then we pass in any commands that we want to send to SQLite. And upon return, we have a success function. In this case, it's just writing out the term dropped to our console in Chrome. And then I've got this universal function to catch any errors uh, that I use in all of my database calls. Now, one additional thing you have to know is that way up at the top of this file is where we open the database. So here we invoke HTML SQL dot open database. And then within there, you give the database an actual name. So it's best practice to use a reverse domain naming convention. So com.fracturedvisionmedia.absence. And we give the name of the da database. So that's absence database. And then we give like a generated kind of number as far as how big we think the database will need to be. And this part's actually explained in greater detail back over on this website right here. So if you want the philosophy behind that, you can go read up on it. And you can see here I've got a number of different things for checking the database, for populating the database with defaults, reading the database, of course dropping the tables, and then we've got some CRUD functions like adding a, a new absinthe, updating an absinthe, or removing an absinthe from the database. So what we're going to show here, and I'll just hit F12 on my machine in order to run this inside a Dreamweaver, 
And let's actually use Ripple for this. So I'm going to enable Ripple. And if you haven't used Ripple, um, it's really useful for doing stuff with uh, PhoneGap or it, probably any other sort of um, you know web development you would do for mobile because it gives you all these different options here. I can emulate different device resolutions and it gives information about all this stuff. You can choose a particular Cordova platform you want, either 1.0 or 2.0. You can modify and test the accelerometer here and fire off events, so forth and so on. You can go to emulate.phonegap.com to check out Ripple. But basically I can go through and actually look at all of my different pieces here. So if I go to inspect element and I go to my console, you'll notice there's actually a ton of different errors that happen. And most of this is simply because of XML HTTP request problems. So you can see since we're using file up here, it's actually causing us quite a bit of issues. So what we're going to do instead is I actually have this on my local host. So you can see up here localhost slash absence solution and this is actually bringing up my PhoneGap project within my local web server and I'm just running it on XAMPP. You can use any sort of web server you want. It's just Z Apache through XAMPP in this case. And if I go and inspect element now and go to my console, you can see there aren't any errors and here we can see that message dropped. Now that message actually came from this particular function called drop tables. You can see right here the uh, success function says dropped. So we could respond to this in any way we want. I'm just sending out to the console. Going back to our index, let's actually pretend that this is the first time this is run on a device and we want to sort of create the tables and um, all that stuff. So we're going to comment out drop tables on our on device ready and instead choose to check database. So what's check database going to do? If we hop back over to our data.js and we go and look for that we can see it's this first function up here. So we're going to use a bit of SQL to create the table if it doesn't exist and that table is going to be named brands. And then we're going to populate that table with a number of different columns. First is going to be an ID which is going to be an integer and a primary key and that's going to be sort of automatic. We don't have to pass that in as we create things. And then we're going to have a name, so the name of the brand of absinthe, and that's text. And that ABV percentage, that's going to be an integer. And then allow for some notes for people to take about each brand, and that's going to be a bit of text. So here is our success function, and you can see we're, we're putting out a transaction, results, and rows array. So here we check to see if rows are what rows away dot length is greater than one. In that case we already have data. We have entries in our database. We have rows. So we don't need to pre-populate the database. We can just go straight to read database. However, if rows away dot length is not greater than one, then we know that the database has just been created fresh for us and we need to populate that database. So when we populate the database, I'm simply inserting a bunch of stuff and right now for this test I just have two absence being inserted here and it'll insert those into our database and then it'll go through and actually read the database for us and read database will go through and perform a select all from brands and then I go through and kind of parse out that data and actually build up some list elements to inject into the DOM. So let's actually see this in action if we go back to Chrome and I'll show one more thing before I refresh this page and that's this resources tab you can see there's our our web SQL database so com.fracturevisionmedia.absin and then if we expand that you can see there's nothing there simply because we've dropped all the tables at this point so let's go back to our console and we'll do a refresh of the page so you can see no data populated success. So what's happened is it's gone through, it's checked to see if we have any data in our database. It found that we did not 
So it went through and populated the database with some kind of basic default absence. And if we go back and look here, we can see there's our brands table and there's each of our rows for our, our defaults. So the database has now been populated. If we go through a second time, so I just refresh that. If we pop back over to data, we can see that when check database is called and we notice, oh, hey, we actually do have some rows in here. We're going to just skip right to read database. We don't have to populate that database again. So we skip over to read database and we just do a simple select all from brands and things get populated. So now if I go back here and I hit F5 to refresh and go over to my console, you can see that we have data, success, etc. And now I can actually interact with this, go to brands, and I can see that both of those entries are in fact coming up here. And if I wanted to, I could um, you know, update or delete the absinthe and, and so forth, add a new absinthe, and none of this is actually working yet in my, in my model, but the point is <laughs> that this particular library makes working with SQLite databases with web storage on mobile devices very, very simple. And hopefully uh, people who are kind of looking to implement this sort of thing uh, can benefit from this little video.